life is a battle, but the good news is, guess what? I read the end of the book. We win. <laughs> you know, as, as we talk about, you know, supernatural increases, I've been telling you that the first, you know, commanded blessing that God gave, you know, the Adam and Eve was to increase. And when you really think about it, even from a natural sense, um, we are designed to increase, right? You know, when we're born, we're all born as ch children, babies, and then we increase, right? We become adults physically, and then we uh, increase in areas that we, hallelujah, praise the Lord, I'm fasting, amen. Come on, talk to me, amen. All right, I got no amens for that one, okay. And so, <laughs> you know, we are like, Lord, help us. But, but you know, we, we increase, I mean, even, even when it comes to our mind, um, you know, we, we start as children, and, and then we, we don't know much, but we start to learn and increase in our knowledge. We start to learn addition and, and language, and, and then we start to learn, you know, about how to drive, and we start to learn about life, and, and then I believe why you're here this morning is because you came to increase and learn more about Jesus. Is anybody here today who wants to increase? And so God, even when it comes to our physical anatomy and, and even our mind, it's really designed to increase. But oftentimes we, we fail to realize that even our spirit was made to increase. That God designed us and he put the seed of his image and his likeness in us. And God wants your spirit to increase. He wants your faith to increase. He wants your love, the spiritual things to increase. Because God designed you not to stay where you are, but to begin to develop and to increase into something greater. Can somebody say amen? And so tell your neighbor, say you're designed to increase. Just tell them that. You're designed to increase. And so we, we have something in the spiritual realm that God has started off with us off with, and God wants to increase it. Uh, scripture says to each is given a measure of faith. So we all have a measure of faith. That's your starting point. Now God wants you to develop that faith into some mountain moving faith. Come on, somebody. And so, so we start at this, at this level, and God wants to start. And I told you that, we're, that in the spiritual realm, last week we, we, we discovered that we're all pregnant. With, with, with increase in destiny, though. In, come on, somebody. Tell your neighbor, say, I'm pregnant. Just say, I'm pregnant. Nobody freak out. Come on, somebody. I had one person say, my daughter, I was not going to hear that from her. Come on, somebody. <laughs> With destiny, with destiny, right? And we found out that we're all pregnant. We, all, we are all incubating something in our spiritual womb. And, and God wants to grow that, develop that to supernaturally increase into this world. And we've got to nurture that. Now, my, my wife, uh, she's pregnant with our third child. And um, I'm having another daughter. And so I'm fasting not 21 days, 41 days. Praise God. No, I'm joking. Come on. Uh, <laughs> And so we're having a, another girl. Come on, give God a clap. Have another daughter. Come on. I'm grateful. I'm, I, I love it. Powerful. Already praying for my son-in-laws. Come on, somebody. Jesus' name. <laughs> we're checking everything. We're getting background check, credit check, tide records. Come on, somebody. Amen. <laughs> you got the blessing? Come on. Anyway. But, uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Focus. All right. But, uh, you know, I'm having our, 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 my wife's pregnant with our, our third child, and, 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 and my wife is, is, is growing this thing that's inside of her. It's our baby, and it's growing. But one thing I, I, I've realized is when you're pregnant is that what, everything she takes in affects the child. That everything she allows in her life will affect what's inside her. Help us, Lord. Like, if, if, if she decided to start smoking, don't worry, the pastor's wife don't smoke. But if she, start, if she started smoking, it would affect what's... Everything she takes in will affect what's inside her. If she, just, if, if she started doing drugs, don't worry, the pastor's wife's not on drugs. I got to make that. It will affect what's inside her. If she puts herself in environments that are harmful, ha, it can damage... What's inside her even kill and abort what was meant to come out. And I felt the Holy Spirit begin to shift my thinking as I was preparing to share with you about the battle of increase. That it's not going to be the devil that's going to kill it. But this year, the Holy Spirit told me to tell you is that your supernatural increase will hinge on what you allow into, you, into your life. To be able to incubate what God wants to bring. I wish I got a better amen than that. Come on, somebody give God a clap and say supernatural increase. And so, and so there is a battle for our increase, but, but, but it, it, it's going to come by what do I allow, I allow in my life that will determine what comes out. Because I can't, I can't lie to my spirit. 
You can't lie. You can lie to me, but you can't lie to your spirit. You know, it's like I'm doing this thing where, where like you, 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 everything you eat, you put it in your, 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 your thing. And, and like, like you're like, you're like, and, and so you're like, you ate that. And you're like, oh, man, do I want to put that in there? You know, because I don't like that I ate that. And, and, and so, you know, of course, right now we're fasting. But, but, you know, sometimes you eat too much of those potatoes. Come on, somebody. And, and you're like, hallelujah. And, and, but but you, I, I, can, I can pretend like I didn't eat four potatoes and not put four potatoes. But I can't lie to my body that four potatoes didn't... And so I could be like, there were only two and a half potatoes technically because I saw Judah eat like another half potatoes. Come on, somebody. And so it wasn't really. And I, I, could, I could play this game and try to pretend, you know, fake it till I make it like, like I didn't take it, like I didn't watch that, like I didn't do it. And I, and I, I'm feeling anointed. Come on. And so, and so, and so I, you can lie. We, we can try to fake it, but the reality is you can never lie to your spirit that what you allow in will determine, come on, somebody, the destiny and the power that God wants to bring. Tell, tell three people, say, watch what you allow in. Say that. Watch what you allow in. You see, there is a battle for our increase for this supernatural battle. And today I want to give you four points. Actually, I mean, record this. Over the next two weeks, I want to give you four points. Okay. <laughs> I wanted to give you, I wanted to give you four points today, but as I got on my notes, I'm like, there's no way I can preach like 30 pages of notes in 30 minutes, praise the Lord. So I'm going to give you two today and then two next week. Okay. So make sure you come back next week or else you'll have half a haircut. And we're like, <laughs> sorry, it's pretty right. So point number one, write this down. If we're going to win the battle for our increase is we have to realize the battle is for what's on you and what's in you. Okay. If we're going to win this battle, because there's a battle, Okay. We have to know what the spoils are. Okay, what does the devil count as a win? What is he trying to, to defeat? And we have to realize it's a renewing of the mind. Come on. That the battle is for what's on me and what's in me. Tell your neighbor there's something on you. And tell them there's something in you. I'm not talking about the physical. Okay, what, what? No, no. There's something on you. There's something, there's a touch of God that's on your life. There's something in you. Now, um, can you bring out that seed? We forgot to bring that one seed out. If you could bring out, that'd be awesome. I, I told you last week that, that, or over the weeks, that our life is in seed form. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord. All right. Thank you so much. And, and uh, I'm holding here's the seed, is our life is in seed form. And, and this seed is representation of our life and how a seed has the power and the potential to increase, to become a life-giving, bearing fruit. This, this seed, where it's at, I told you all the principles of a seed, you know, just don't determine where, where this, the destiny of a seed by what it looks like in the present. And, and so I told you that this seed, and I told you that so is our life. We are like this seed, where, where, where God sees us with so much in our life that he put on us. And I want to say, the enemy sees you like a seed, just so you know. He does. He knows the power and the potential that's in your life through Christ Jesus. Not because we're awesome, but because he's awesome. He knows the image you've been made of. He knows, you know, who, who, uh, you know what, what call there is on your life. But the problem is most believers don't see themselves like a seed. They don't see themselves. They, 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 instead, they see themselves and they judge their future by their present condition. And they think, this is who I'll always be. I'll always be this way. I'll, my, my marriage will always be like this. You know, my, my kids, I guess my life will always be like this. And, and instead, they, 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 they judge their future by their present condition. But I, I want to tell you that you're in seed form. And, and, and sometimes the uh, attack and the battle that you face is because the greater call that's on your life and the greater, come on somebody, kingdom potential that God wants to bring. And so tell your neighbor, say, we're in seed form. Just tell them that. We're in seed form. Now, in the verses we just read, because God blessed Adam and Eve, first thing, he blessed them. He blessed them. And I always like to say this because, again, there, there are those that would try to make you believe, oh, you know, you're just a bless me, bless me church. No, I'm not trying to get it. I am blessed. Lord already blessed me. Just say I'm blessed. And so God blessed Adam and Eve. He gave them, bestowed upon them his image, his likeness. God blessed them and told them to increase. Now, paint the picture. Adam gets married. First, first ever wedding, right? Adam goes to sleep, wakes up, and he's like, whoa, man, there's a woman. Bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. He gets all romantic. You know, when you fall in love, you get all romantic. Come on, somebody. He shall be called woman. And so, and so they get married, all right? Adam gets married, and they buy their first home. It's called Eden. 
It was given to him. Come on, somebody. And so they're in Eden. It's perfect. It's beautiful. Killer garden, guys. Okay. <laughs> awesome. I mean, everything they ever wanted. It's right there. Dream home, ladies. And so it's awesome. Adam is there. They got their pet, Simba. Just picture. We're having a little fun here, but you know what I mean? It's great. I mean, they're chilling. It's perfect. There ain't no, there ain't no neighbors to have drama with. <laughs> all right? There's nothing. All right? He's blessed. The Bible says that the ground produced fruit. Like, just boom. It was just blessed. Right? And, and so, you know, Adam's watching the game. Okay, we're embellishing the story, but you know what I mean. He's chilling. And then Eve is, is reading a magazine called The Book of Life. She's just kind of there reading it. And I mean, they're just like, they're just trying to just do what God called them to do. I'm blessed. I got married. I got our home. We're trying to build a kingdom. They're not messing with nobody. They're not, they're not trying to mess with anybody. But then all of a sudden, the, the devil shows up and begins to mess with them and starts to mess with Eve and starts to mess with Adam because we know Adam was there. Eve gets a bad rap, but Adam was there the whole time. We'll get to that in a second. And so they, the devil starts tempting them. Have you figured out yet in this Christian walk that you don't have to look for the battle, but the battle comes to you? Have you figured it out? That, that oftentimes you don't got to go look for the opposition. The opposition finds you. The battle will come to you and the devil will mess with you. The battle will come to your phone. You didn't go looking for it. It came to you. Have you found out that sometimes the battle will come to your home? Have you found out sometimes the battle comes to your family, your soul? The battle comes to you on the freeway. The battle will come to you in your mind, your business. The battle will come to you for your kids. You're like, all I'm trying to do, Lord, is I'm just trying to build your kingdom. I ain't messing with nobody. I'm just like trying to live good. And I ain't trying to, you know, I ain't trying to kill nobody. I ain't trying to mess with, come on, somebody. And you're like, why is it? Why, Lord? Have you ever wondered why the battle comes to you? And you're like, even though I'm not looking for it, I want to tell you why. And the reason why is because there is a battle for your increase, for your supernatural. There is a battle battle for what's on you and what's in you and the devil wants to stop your your destiny and your legacy but you've got to get a revelation today that the spoils are, are what's on me and in me but I ain't gonna let the devil rob me of what God is gonna do somebody just say amen you see there is a battle that comes to us and, and, and you'll see it here in, in, in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 4 this was the center of Satan's attack watch this in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 4, the center of Satan's attack was this. The Bible says, then the serpent said to the woman, watch this here, okay? So we know he has a conversation with her. She starts discussing things with him, but then he goes in for the kill with this. The serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. This was the, the center of his attack. So the devil comes and says, Eve, you won't kill the thing that's on you and in you by consuming this. You, you, won't, you won't abort or damage what God is trying to do in you by taking this. Yeah, you're going to die. It's all good. You can eat of this and still live this out. That was the lie of the devil. Because God had, had told him otherwise. No. You can't eat of this fruit because if you eat it, it's going to kill what's inside of you. And it will, it, will, it will damage, it will contaminate what I want to bring in you and what's on you. But Satan comes and completely contradicts it and he tells them, you're not going to die. It's all good. Just consume of it. And my question for our church family today as we're talking about the supernatural increase this year is perhaps... What are some of the things the enemy is trying to get you to allow in that is stopping the supernatural increase God wants to get out of your life? I'll take the it's good and one amen. Thank you. What are some of the things that perhaps we are taking in that is contaminating what God wants to bring out? What is it this morning? Is it perhaps fear that you've been biting the fruit of fear that you don't trust God? That you've been biting that, that fruit of fear and, and you're biting it and you're trying to feed. And that, that fear is actually feeding and contaminating what's on you and what's in you. 
Is it perhaps today you've been biting the fruit of worry every single day? And the devil says, that's not going to kill what's in you. But we bite it. And we're so worried about what's going to happen that you never enjoy what is happening. That you're so, and you're biting and you're living off that fruit. And, and you wonder, why, why? And the devil's like, it's not going to kill you. It's not going to kill you. It's all good. It's all good. Is it perhaps an addiction today that, that you've been consuming of, that you've been biting of that fruit, smoking that, putting that? Come on, somebody. There's still a preacher that preaches that sin is bad and God is good. Is it perhaps something that you've been biting on that is keeping you? And the devil says, don't worry. That ain't going to kill what God wants to do. It's okay. Just keep allowing that in. But instead, it's putting you into a place of depression addiction what is it today is it perhaps a habit that you know that is that that you're like man i know but the devil says that ain't gonna hurt you is it perhaps jealousy today that you're like god but i don't have that i don't have that if i had that then it would be good that is killing what god wants to do is it perhaps an offense is it is it unforgiveness that you've been biting on the fruit of unforgiveness that 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 you're like god says don't do forgive or else you won't be forgiven and you've been biting of that unforgiveness and so therefore you're in a place of offense and offense is having a fence around you and so therefore you're prisoner to this unforgiveness and it's aborting what God wants to bring out of you because you're taking this in is it perhaps a him or a her not that you're biting them but but you know people are crazy these days but you know is it a him or a her that you've been feeding off this toxic relationship and, and God says no that that that's not my destiny for you it it reminds you of who you used to be not who you are called to be is it what is it this morning as we're talking about supernatural increase that we perhaps have been biting on that is contaminating what's on us and in us I believe God wants to deal with that today because I could preach all day long about I, I could anoint you with 10 bottles of Crisco oil but if you, if we continue to bite on that fruit, it is going to harm and contaminate the things that is in us. You see, Satan's attack was that you won't die. It ain't going to mess your life up. It's all good. You can, you, you, can, you can do like that and like this. It's all good. You can, you can, you can do this and, 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 and hang out here and smoke that. and uh, Come on, somebody. I wish I had more immense for a few, at least a few church mothers. Come on, somebody. That we could still do this and, and it's okay. It ain't going to kill what's inside of you. It's all right. I mean, you can kind of be half in, half out. Come on, somebody. You know, it's all right, Eve. God, no, you're not going to die. It ain't going to kill your marriage. I mean, if you just look at it a little bit, it's not going to kill. I mean, it's not going to mess up your family if you just kind of go sometimes. You don't do it all the time, but, you know, just when you're stressed out, you know, it's not going to kill the holiness of, it's not going to kill your father. It ain't going to kill you know your destiny because after all I mean people mess up a few I mean it's not gonna kill well I come to serve notice the devil come on somebody is a liar today I preach and I prophesied my prayer and said you say I'm no longer gonna allow it to contaminate the thing that God has in my life oh I wish somebody gave God a louder praise than that today and said I'm gonna feed the thing that's in me come on somebody the devil is a liar And this is the same thing the devil does every single day to this day. From the garden to Garden Grove. Come on, somebody. If you live in Garden Grove, that might be prophetic for you. I don't know. Come on. (laughs) How did he know? Come on. All right. You see, we're in seed form. We're in seed form. There's something on you and there's something in you. Come on, tell your neighbor. Say there's something on you and something in you. My prayer this week, I want I want you to I want you to pray that God help me realize what's on me and what's in me. I don't want to take in anything that would contaminate that, damage that, and begin to pray. God, show me. You see a seed. Going back to this analogy, this seed even has something on it. You want to know what's on this seed? Is that it's a seed. That it could have been something else, but God made it a seed. And so on it is the seed. You want to know what's on your life? You're a child of God. God God designed you. You're his child. He ordained for you to live during this time. There's something on you. You're a child of God. This seed has something in it. It has programmed, hardwired the ability to become a tree and even a forest with more seeds. And, And there's something in you. And what's in you is the power of the Holy Spirit that God wants to work within you. You see, there's something on us and there's something in us. Now, for us... 
living in the 21st century, we're living on this side of the cross. Adam and Eve lived on this side of the cross or before Jesus came and died. Now, we'll break it down in weeks to come, but we know that the way the story unfolds, God comes, God makes provision, and he makes his own covering for Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve try to hide themselves in their own figs, uh, fig trees and all this stuff, and they try to create their own covering, but God covered them. How many thank God for grace and his covering over our lives? Say amen. But they were on this side of the cross. Now, on, uh, we live on the other side of the cross. In other words... We are covered now by what Jesus did on the cross. That because, because sin entered through one man and woman, Adam, now sin has been conquered through one na man named Jesus. And now Jesus has conquered sin and death. He has become the propitiation for my sins. His blood has washed away my sins. And therefore, when I receive Christ, the devil has been conquered. He has been defeated. He's under these feet. Come on. And, and, and he has been, he has been uh, disarmed. He is a roaring lion, but God took out his teeth. All he could do is nibble on you. Come on, somebody. You know, and so, and, and so we are living on this side of the cross. Jesus rose from the grave. I can raise from the grave. Somebody shout like you received Jesus and we have victory. And so we're living on this side of the cross, which people of the Old Testament long for these days. You're kidding me that Christ is going to be on you and in you. We're carriers of this. We who have received Jesus, I want you to write this down. I only got so much room on your notes, but let me teach, okay? I get fired up, but let me teach this. Write this down, okay? It's a sub point under point number one. Well, Pastor Josiah, what's on me? You are clothed with Christ. Say it. Say, I'm clothed with Christ. And so what's on our lives living on this side of the cross, A.D., on your dominion, after his death, the reign of the Lord, is I now am clothed with Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 13 and verse 14, the Bible says this. I'll give you a little theology here. The Bible says, instead, someone say instead. <laughs> Clothe yourself with the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, and don't let yourself think about ways to indulge in your evil desires. Mm, mm, mm. Sometimes you read a scripture, it tastes so good. The Bible says, instead, clothe yourself with Christ. You see, I believe God is calling you and I to be instead type of people. You're, to be an instead type of person. I know. You want to leave me. I don't know why that came to my mind. But I know. We're having fun. I know that I can view that, but instead, I'm going to clothe myself with Christ. I know that I could have slept in this morning and then just ate some tea and watched the game, but instead, I'm going to go to the house of God and clothe myself with Christ. I know that I could smoke that, do that, mess around with that, but instead, there's something on me and in me, I'm going to clothe myself with Christ. I know that I could be offended and have unforgiveness after all that you did to me in 2012, 24, come on, 1936, come on somebody, but instead, I'm going to clothe myself with Christ, forgive, and move forward and not live in offense. I know that I can get hooked and depressed. I know that I can be compressed. I know that I can mess around on Saturday night with Papi Chulo, but instead, I'm going to pray for a man of God and clothe myself with Christ. I know that I can go and try to just, you know, waste my money and do all this and live for myself, but instead, I'm going to build the kingdom of God. I'm going to sow my seed. I'm going to lay up for myself treasures in heaven and see the goodness of God. Come on, talk to me, church. I know that I can be, try to be a playboy, but instead, I'll be a man of God. I know I can go and just try to live it up with all the girls on Saturday here and there. But instead, I'm going to join a connect group and live a holy life and protect the goodness of God that is in my soul. Come on, talk to me. I know that my wife and I, that we can just go and, and mess around. But instead, we'll have a holy matrimony. Come on, a holy. I know I can fool around, but instead I'll be a committed, faithful man. I know, but instead, I, I believe God is calling some instead type of people tonight, this morning. Come on, somebody, give God praise if you're an instead type of person. Tell three people, say instead. Instead, 
I'll clothe myself with Christ. You see, this is the people God wants to begin to see supernatural increase in this generation. I'm telling you, we, we are living in a, in a season and a time that, are, uh, and I'm, I'm not, trust me, I'm not just chasing a move of God. I'm chasing God, and God moves when you chase him. Come on, somebody. It is, I'm not just trying to fabricate, but I believe God wants to bring about such a great awakening in your life, in your family's life, in your kid's life, in Southern California. I wish there were at least three people that had the eyes to see. I wish there were some people that had a prophetic insight that we begin to understand what God is doing that this is a time we're living in now I love this because put that verse back up there watch this now it says instead someone say instead yeah. I came to church I know I can't eat a double cheeseburger but instead I'm going fast and seek the, the presence of God I know I could sleep in but instead I'm going to wake up and seek the face of God I, man I could preach on this for the next 45 minutes he says, instead, clothe yourself with the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. We who are Southern Californians, uh, we're very familiar with uh, the red carpet in Hollywood. And there's this thing that happens in the red carpet in Hollywood that when people walk it, they'll be like, they'll come and they'll, be, they'll ask them this question. They'll say, uh, who are you wearing? Who are you wearing? And they'll come and they'll say, Oh, this whole thing is just very wang, you know. Don't worry, it's nothing. You know, who are you wearing? Oh, it, well, no, this is this is a Ver, Versace, Versace. Come on, somebody, this is Ver, Ver, Versace, Versace. Ver, Ver, oh wow, it's a Chanel, a Chanel, Ooh, Dolce and Gabbana, Givenchy. <laughs> who are you wearing? And they're like, wow, where, wow, and they're like, wow, and and then, and then they're wearing it, and they walk like like. And they got about a confidence on them because this is designer. It's designer. It's tailor made just for me. I want to let somebody, I don't know who, I'm about to baptize someone with this water glass. I want to let somebody know in 2017 that you, my friend, have been wearing something that is designed by the master designer, the best tailor of all time in history, and you are clothed with the greatest name, and his name is, his name is, I said his name is, and I wish that you would begin to realize that this clothing of Christ is not just for the red carpet, but this clothing of Christ is when I walk through the valley of the... When I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'm reminded I got my threads on, I got my Jesus on, and so devil, I ain't gonna die, I'm close. I wish you'd tell five people, I'm clothed with Christ. Come on, tell them. I'm clothed with Christ. You always know when someone's clothed with Christ, you're like, don't mess with them. You are a liar. I'm clothed. And wherever I walk, it's not just for the, for the, for the high points. But when I walk into my job on Tuesday, when I walk to my computer on a late night, When, when I get that text from my past and they tell me, hey, we haven't seen you in a long time. And you'll be like, yeah, because that was me a long time. And when they say, hey, you changed, be like, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That they see that I changed. I don't wear that funky stuff, no. Thank you, Lord. I'm a little fired up. I'm sorry. Because I'm telling you this word. I had the privilege of ministering this word yesterday at a conference. Man, that place just erupted. I believe this is a prophetic word from heaven. Come on, tell three people. Say, I'm clothed with Christ. Come on, tell them. Galatians 3.27 says, For all of you who have been baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. Again, I love to preach, but I gotta, I gotta give you these, these theological principles. If you have not been baptized, you haven't coronated that final thing. 
It's you got to be baptized. And it's like me wearing a ring is, is I got to say, okay, this is official. Boom. I got to go public with it. It ain't a secret. Yeah, me, me, me and Pastor Marie were married. Psh, psh, psh. Don't tell nobody. But the word says that I got to go public and say, that's it. That's it. Sign me up. I want to get baptized. Because I want to let the world know I want my father to see from heaven down. That the old me is going down. And these old filthy rags of my flesh. These old filthy rags of, of me eating from the fruit of the world and this fruit of the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. I mean, the old me that used to eat and, and feed off of fear and worry and addiction and sin and promiscuity. The old me that, uh, that I'm going to kill that. It's going to go down. And when it goes down, the new me is going to, I'm going to come up. I'm going to come up. Man, I'm, I'm going to have workout. I'm going to come up. Come on, somebody. And I'll be close. If you have not been baptized, you need to be baptized. No, listen to me. You need to follow Christ and say, God, the old me needs to die and the new me needs to come up. Don't wait anymore. You see, the devil tries to make you believe you got to be perfect to get baptized. But what you don't realize is you got to be baptized to be perfected. But the devil lies to you. Oh, I'm not perfect. I still got issues. We all got issues. And if they're like, I ain't got no issues, that's their issue. <laughs> they lie in. And so you get, it's like the devil lies to you. You think you got to be perfect to fast, but not realizing you got to fast to be perfected. You got to be perfect to come to Jesus. No, you got to come to Jesus to be perfected. And so the, the enemy lies. He, he twists the word and you ain't going to die. It's okay. I mean, come on. There's something on me. There's something in me. So what's on you? I'm clothed with Christ. What's in you? Write this down. Sub point under point number one, point two. Is you're filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Letter B, actually letter B. I'm sorry. I, I got all kinds of points. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'll tell you that point next week. Go back to point B. Under point number one, you have A, you're clothed with Christ. B, you're filled with the Holy Spirit. You're filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. If you can add that word in the media, that'd be awesome. Filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. These next two verses I'm going to read to you absolutely bless my socks off this week. And I really pray they bless you because what's in you is not some like force or some, some type of electricity. No, it's the power of the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 1, 19 and 20 says, I also pray, this is Paul's prayer, and I love this. Paul prayed this prayer for the church under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit was, te was telling you heaven's prayer for you. Paul says, I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe in him. I started praying, God, help me to understand the incredible great power that you have for me through your Holy Spirit. Help me understand what's in me, what's on me and what's in me. He says, for those who believe him, and in case you don't know what type of power this is, he says, this is the same mighty power. Someone say the same power. Verse 20. That raised Christ from the dead and it also seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in heavenly realms. And so God says this type of power is the same power that brings dead things to life. And I wonder if there's anyone that needs some dead things to come to life in 2017. Then I wish that today you would get a revelation and understand that the power of the Holy Spirit is available to me. It dwells in me and it wants to bring dead things to life. God, I'm talking prophetically. I'm, I'm not preaching. I'm prophesying to some marriages right now. God wants to bring dead things to life. God wants to bring dead dreams to life. He wants to bring you dead, 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 dead ideas to life. 